one thing that tends to come up a lot with web security that is really often not that well understood is the use of HTTPS. Uh, and what I want to look at today is one thing in particular, which is I'll often see people say to a website owner, hey, your logon isn't using HTTPS. It's asking me to enter my username and my password, and I can't see a padlock in the address bar or a certificate or any other sort of sign that there is an SSL certificate protecting this site. And the website owner will come back and say, oh yeah, but what we're doing is we're posting the credentials to HTTPS. Therefore, your password is encrypted when it's sent to our server. Now that's true, but there is a risk in the way that pattern happens. And in fact, to be honest, it's next to useless. And rather than just uh, write something up about it, I thought it's better if we see it firsthand, and it's better if we see it firsthand against a site that follows this pattern. Now there are a lot of sites that do that, but the one that I'm going to pick here is Woolworth, which is a large Aussie supermarket chain. And what we'll see on the Woolworth site here is we've got an option to go and do some shopping online. So we will do that. And we'll see that there's a login form down here. And the main thing is that this is not a protected connection. So clearly this has just been loaded over HTTP. There is no identity verified or any of those sort of things. It's just a normal connection with no SSL slash HTTPS. So what I'm going to do is let's log on. So I'll just enter my username in here, which is just my email address. Now I'm going to enter my password. And before I submit this password, let's just turn on the developer tools on Chrome so that we can see what happens when we post. So we're monitoring the network. Let's go down a little bit here and we will log in. Now, when we log in, if we go right back to the top of those network requests, we can see that there was a post request and we have a look at this guy and let's have a look at the headers. Now here is the URL and you'll see that this is indeed an HTTPS address. So any data that we posted with this request was indeed encrypted. So if we jump down and I'll just zoom in a little bit here as well, we will see that there is my email address and my password, which is clearly just a temporary password for this example. I will be changing this. Now the point is, is that all of these credentials have been sent securely. And if we jump back out and we close this down, we will see that I am indeed logged in. Here's Troy's favorites. Okay, so that all looks fine. Now that might look secure. Uh, and indeed, obviously, guys like Woolworths do think it's secure. But there's a little bit of a trick. Now here's what I want to show you. So let's actually now just log out. Let's now go and try this again. And what I'm going to do this time is let me just enter my email address and hotmail.com. Now what I'm going to do before I enter my password, let's fire up those developer tools and we're going to see something a little bit interesting. I'm now going to enter my password. Now watch the network connections down beneath. You see that? Every time I'm typing a key, that key is being sent off to another website. And in fact, what's happening here is we can see if we look at maybe this first request, Every time I type a key, it's going off to this address just here, which as you'll see is hackyourself.troyhunt.com. So what's actually happening is that there has been a key logger inserted into this page. And you'll see that as I started typing my password, and if you look at the first letters here, so we had P, at symbol, S, S, W, so you know exactly what we saw in the form just before, it is being sent off and it's being sent off to this little keylogger path on my website. And if we have a look at the parameters, we can see that there's a P, which is the key that was typed, password, which is the field it's being entered into, and a unique ID off the end of it. Now what's actually happening is that every single time I type the key, it's hitting that address. So what it's able to do then is say, these are the individual keys that I typed into the field called password in the session, which is marked by this unique ID. So basically it is a keylogger. It's getting everything that a user is typing in. And this is exactly the risk with loading a login form over HTTP. Now I should be able to kill that and log in and it should work. I'm back online. Okay, fine. So again, that like the user experience without actually looking at the network requests is that everything is fine. My password was encrypted when it was sent to Woolworth but it was kind of too late because it had already been caught by a keylogger and sent off to my website. Now I'm just going to log out and we'll see what this actually looks like in the source code. So if we jump into source and we might zoom in a little bit and jump down to the end, 
we see right down the bottom here that this is the script that has been injected. And all it is is it's just a keylogger JavaScript file, and there's a variable that's set here which gives it the path of where I actually want to do the keylogging. And in the blog post that goes with this video, I'll put in a little bit more info. But that's the point. Like, this is how simple it is. So I was able to mount a man in the middle attack so that when the login page for Woolworths was loaded, I just whacked in a keylogger. I could have done other things like just change the path that the form submitted to when somebody tried to log in, or maybe just waited until the whole password was typed in and grabbed it. Could have done a bunch of things. The point is, is that when you load a login form over HTTP, anything that you do after that is kind of a little bit pointless. If you're worried about a man in the middle and you're worried enough to actually use SSL, you got to put it on the login form because otherwise people just can't do this. So next time someone says, yeah, but we post to HTTPS, it's no good. You've got to load over HTTPS or you risk problems exactly like this.